Hong Kong had a quite good um, art scene when you were looking for it. Um, so One A Space was very active. Um, Video Taj was active. Um, there was a great organization called Artist Commune, also in the Cattle Depot. These were the three Cattle Depot institutions. Um, certainly, um, Asia Art Archive um, um, was there and were very active. And um, I'm, I think that is, these were the most important ones at that time. Um, there were occasionally exhibitions at the city hall um, that were actually sometimes quite good. And, um, and then there was the Hong Kong Art Center. Yes, also um, still there. Um, but all these things were, yeah, I mean, you, you really had to look to find, to find them and you had to know people. Um, and there was no art fair, right? There was um, no um, commercial galleries in that time. There was basically there was um, Johnson's Hen Art, um, which was still in Queens Road. Um, Katie de Tilly was there. And then there were um, galleries like Art Botus, um, which doesn't exist anymore. Um, but that was the art scene in that time. So um, it was very, um, very small. And, um, but also what happened in that time um, is that um, people moved into Fotan. And, and in Fotan, um, around um, um, Park Shan Chuan, Warren, um, um, Quan Chan Chi, Doris, um, Doris Wong. Um, um, and um, so a lot happened in Fotan. And so there were open studios in Fotan every, every year, um, which were very, very, yeah, which were very active. And, um, and so there was actually a, a young scene developing up there in Fotan and around, certainly around Chinese University, because in that time, um, Chinese University was the, the only art, art school in town. So most, um, most of the artists in that time came, came from Chinese U. And, um, and that was, um, so there was a lot happening up, up in, the, yeah, up around um, in that time in that place, um, but these were really, yeah, these were the only places um, where occasionally some contemporary art exhibition happened. And um, what was, I think, interesting, um, all of them were very um, Hong Kong local. So a lot of things happened for local artists, but there was not a lot of exchange between the local and the international level. Um, what also happened during that time is um, China, China, op not China didn't open up, but Guangzhou became um, um, Guangzhou became more interesting with the Guangzhou Biennial that was then curated by um, Hu Han Ru, which was um, a very important show. Um, um, then Vitamin Creative Space um, basically opened up and brought a lot of people. You know, a lot of things happened there. So there was a, and, um, and with that, um, Shenzhen, which looked completely different than it looks today, um, also opened up. And, and, um, and um, there were really interesting artists because a lot of artists in China at that time were living, um, were living in Shenzhen because they didn't want, for various reasons, didn't want to live in, in Beijing and wanted to be closer to, um, to Hong Kong, right? Um, so there was actually an interesting scene happening um, around OCAT in, in Shenzhen. Um, and I mean, the two places were really OCAT and, um, and, um, and vitamin creative space where things happened. And um, so it was, it was very different, um, but it was, not, it was not international. It was really, um, um, it was Hong Kong, but I mean, people really didn't take in that time Every, every Hong Kong artist um, w was asked, why are you not moving to Beijing? Because in Beijing, um, 798 started to open and some art markets starting to, started to explode. And a lot of artists actually saw and even did move to, to China in that time. And because in Hong Kong, for them, nothing was going on and definitely not, there was no market. 
Um, I got to know Parasite because in, um, before I came to Parasite, I, I was working in, in New Zealand. I was running an institution called, called Artspace in Auckland, which was it's very similar to Par Parasite. And um, in, for, for, um, for Artspace, I made an exhibition um, which was called Asian Art Spaces because I was very interested in that time. Um, in that time, there was there was an, a quite a good connection between all these independent art spaces. Or, and, um, and it came from also Han, Han, Juan Ru has, I mean, one has to give Juan Ru a lot of credit here. Um, he made an exhibition, uh, he, made, he was curator together with Charles Escher in Guangzhou, in Korea, the Guangzhou, in the Guangzhou um, Biennial. And he made an exhibition called, um, he made an exhibition called Pause. And for pause, he brought together all the Asian art spaces. And they basically had a space that was exactly the size of the art space. They recreated all these art spaces. And um, apart from, apart from um, that this was an interesting exhibition and an interesting exhibition concept, because the whole art scene in that time in Asia happened in these spaces, right? There was no museum. There was no, the biennial, there was basically Guangzhou. That was, I mean, um, um, but what, what happened also for that exhibition that a lot of people met. A lot of these people running these art spaces met together and got to know each other and formed friendships and alliances. I did see that exhibition, but I was in that time, I was not part of that exhibition, right? I was still in Museum. Yeah. Um, but what happened is that, um, so then I made that exhibition called Asian Art Spaces, and for Asian Art Spaces, and the idea was pretty easy. Um, I would, I traveled around Asia. So I went to, to KL and Bangkok and, and Hong Kong and um, KL, Bangkok, Hong Kong, um, Japan, I think. And, um, and I made these connections and they all would, they all would send us um, a FedEx box later for that because FedEx boxes in that time cost a hundred US dollars. So it was the cheapest way to transport art. Um, so Asian Art Spaces was basically a show um, of 10 different art, or 12 different art spaces from all over Asia, and they all um, send us something. And um, I don't remember what Parasite sent, but that was the way, um, that is how I met um, Warren and Sarah, by doing the research, by coming to Hong Kong, doing the research for that show, and um, that's how they met me and how I met them. And um, I, I still remember um, I, I think I came in during, um, I, yeah, and I remember sitting on the rooftop of, um, of um, Map Office, which lived in Changwan in that time, and thinking like, wow, that's pretty cool here. And then when, the, when they advertised the job as um, curator or um, she, executive director, or whatever it was called, um, two years later, um, my wife and I, um, decided that that would be a great great way to go to move on and go to Asia and go to Hong Kong which we both liked as an idea because um your king is from New Zealand I'm from Germany the Hong Kong seemed seemed um, not only right in the middle but um the chance to work in Asia in a in a country that spoke English um was um, an amazing chance to to jump on and um and um and also to set up a new, I mean, I didn't, I mean, it was not setting up Parasite. Parasite existed before, but Parasite was an artist run space. And I think coming, uh, coming out of that, um, that pause show I was just talking about in, in Korea, um, Warren and Sarah and so on understood that they can take Parasite into another level. And then that to have an independent, an, a, curator director there and not to run it as a as an artist collective would be the next step so they really i mean they were very i mean they were very forward thinking in that time do we realizing that um also giving up basically giving up their their their, their influence and their power and so on and and changing an artist run space to into a curator a curator run space and um yeah, so that was basically, um, um, so I, yeah, so I went in 2005, um, 2004, 
to do um, Asian art spaces. And the next time I came, I, I had the job, <laughs> um, which because the interview was obviously made um, via telephone. And in that time, it was really telephone. There was no video or something like that, right? Yeah. Um, so that's, um, yeah, that's how I first met. And Tim was, Tim Lee was um, um, chairman of the board. And um, I think um, Tim, Tim, Warren, and Sarah together, um, also with, together with Linda and Phoebe and, 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 um, and others, um, they had that vision. I don't think, I think when I saw them in 2004, they actually didn't have a show. So I didn't, I didn't, there was no show, I, you know, there was no show. So when I, when I came back, um, they had the donut show, um, which, which was a show which had some local and some international participants. Um, however, but I, um, and it was an interesting show. I think Linda curated it. Um, it was interesting because it was a multimedia show. It was a different attempt to look at art. But I think what I, um, what I realized in that show is they had actually, they had invited um, one or two foreign artists. And, um, and um, again, it was a good show, but the artists, I was wondering like, look, if you have a space in Hong Kong, you can invite the most famous artists in the world, right? So why don't you do it? And, and, and that is, I think, why, um, um, why when we did bigger international shows, we then had people like Lawrence Wiener and, 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 um, um, and Paul Chan. Okay, Paul, is, Paul was kind of in between and because he was a, he's Hong Kong, but he's not Hong Kong, right? I mean, he lives in New York and he's, he, hadn't, he hadn't been too much back. Um, so on, but also when we did the group shows, I mean, you see it already in the... Um, um, the, um, in the power place show, um, we had people like, like Ulai in, um, you know, Ulai and even Francis Alus. I mean, I forgot that we had Francis Alus in it because we actually are going to show Francis Alus now in, in the next, in the next, um, Dagoon show. Um, but that's pretty, I mean, that was pretty amazing. Um, but it was so in that time I was, um, I was just lucky. Um, because nobody else did show these um, A-list artists, um, A-list artists, um, international A-list artists here in Hong Kong. Um, also, Sang Dali um, was at that time actually quite, uh, uh, yeah, or Yin Yin Yin, um, these are all um, very, very important artists which have, had, have not shown much here in Hong Kong. I mean, the Chinese artists had more, um, through Johnson, Ten Art Gallery, they had more exposure. Um, and, um, yeah, and that made, uh, I think people, um, people remember Parasite, um, before, because we could mix, um, we could mix these amazing international artists with really interesting young and upcoming, um, artists. So somebody like Pak Chan Chun, I mean, I think all Lee Kit, Pak Chan Chun, Nadim Abbas, um, um, they all had their first bigger shows and installations in, or one of their first or bigger installations um, in Parasite. Um, it was not easy in the beginning because the board, um, the board was, again, it was an artist-run institution, right? And the artist-run institution, um, every, everybody in that artist-run institution, first of all, thinks they are, um, um, and that's a good thing, right? They are a director. They take a lot of influence and a lot of decisions. Um, but um, certainly, I had my own my own ideas of what what I want to show and how how I want to to run that institution. And um, so, um, 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 so in the beginning, um, some of the board members um, left. Uh, some of the, I mean, I mean. We, we also had only artists on the board, um, on the board, which was not a good mix, right? In the normal board of an artist organization, you have a mix, you have a mix of people that are, you know, people that, you know, that have different um, professional knowledge. Some are collectors, some are lawyers, some are. So what I did is I, I radically changed the structure of the board, um, um, which was made rather easy because again, some of the members left and, um, 
and um, we had a bit of space in the board in the board and um, and I move I I really changed changed it not only from the curatorial ambition but I put um, I made it more into one of what I thought would be in in one of these independent art spaces um, and because I felt that this was also um, what I was asked to do I think I was asked to come in to do these changes and 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 certainly I talked to constantly with all the board members with Tim with um, with um, with Tim with Warren with Sarah mostly um, Linda Linda as well and um, and there was I mean it it wasn't there was I mean there was no there were no fights or there were no you know big dramas um, it was a a slow change over one or two years. Um, also, I brought new staff. I mean, I brought Christina, Christina Lee as a curator in, um, um, which was great to bring. I mean, she really, I mean, I could not have done Parasite without Christina because I could not have gone to China without Christina, right? Um, I mean, we could have gone, um, in that time going to Guangzhou, um, um, was not, um, not that easy, right? There was no Google Translate or Google Maps or, or, um, or anything. Um, um, so Christina was a big part of, of, um, of that outreach of, um, of, yeah, making Parasite from a Hong Kong artist run space into really the place for, or one of the major places for contemporary art in the Pearl River Delta. And we wanted, we really wanted to reach out into into the Pearl River Delta and showed a lot of artists from there, and then I made that um, Pearl River City show, which traveled um, from from Germany to Poland to uh, Munich. Yeah, three, three. Yeah, which also had, if you read the read the list of artists that were part of that show, there was Van Gogh, there was Chao Fei, um, there were um, Park Chan Chuan, Li Kit. Um, they were all already in that show, 2005. It was not only it. It was I. We also in that in that time, but that was actually not my idea. When I came in, Parasite already had, um, um, Parasite had um, an application in with the Jockey Club for a curator course, which I was supposed to to lead, and um, and um, uh, Gina Wong was very active with with that. She was also an important board member at that time. She did a lot. And then she, she went on actually then to, to form her own, um, contemporary art space experimenter, which was is still quite doing a good job. Um, um, so there was this, this idea of curating, um, bringing in also foreign curators. Um, we did, um, Yilmaz Jivor, um, who's now the director of the Ludwig Museum of, in Cologne. So one of the biggest museums in, in, no, probably yeah, in, in the world. <laughs> um, he he was there doing a small show. Um, we we brought in um, much. We did um, a seminar. God, you know, and we did a seminar about curating. We did um, a lot of talks and conversation about curating. Um, so my um, the the idea was about networking. The idea was about networking. Um, may, maybe based on that. Um, Asian art, art spaces show already in New Zealand, right? Bringing the different Asian art spaces together more into Hong Kong, moving out of, moving also more into China. And then um, we had that project, um, which was called October Contemporary, where um, in that time there was always that talk about doing a biennial in, in Hong Kong, which I never really supported. However, what we did is we, um, we brought all the art spaces together in the, in the month of October um, and to make a show to a certain topic. So we, basic, we basically would have a biennial in all the independent art spaces and work together, but it was not one kind of international biennial. It was only also, and that was great. That was a great, I think it was a great initiative, um, not only because I, um, because I, yes, I like the idea of bringing everybody together, but it was also the first time we all talked together. That gave us a platform, AAA and 1A and Videotage and, 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 but also, no, Sound Pocket didn't exist in that time. But I think Young Young 
No, you're young, young work actually at Parasite, et cetera. So anyway, there was a lot of these spaces. I don't, one has to look in the flyer who, who participated, artist commune certainly. Um, but, but so for me, because Parasite in that time being in, in, in Poyan Street is, is so small, right? I mean, it is such a small space. Um, so we, we had to permanently network to do things somewhere else or um, somewhere else or with other people. And it, it, it felt a lot of times, uh, it felt more like an office, right? Where we, where we had this small office upstairs and then, um, and then we just reached out and, and did a lot of things um, connecting a lot of people. We took another shop doing Parasite. We took, took a side shop a size shop um, over and actually enlarged it by whatever, 10 square meters, but 10 square meters was a big, if you was big when you have only 30 square meters. Puyan Street was not, was a very cheap neighborhood because the coffin shops are there and the hospital are there. So in that time, in this time, 2007, it was not the hip neighborhood it is now, right? It was a very, very um, rundown, cheap, um, non-desirable neighborhood. There was no coffee shop, right? We went to Tagore on the corner and had our lunches there. There was no, there was no Pacific coffee. There was no coffee. I don't remember any coffee shop there or, or a restaurant or something like that. It was, um, um, we went to the cheap place, to the Dai Pai Dongs and that was it, right? Um, it was a completely different kind of a neighborhood. And I liked, I liked, I loved that neighborhood there and I loved working close to, to Hollywood. Um, I loved working um, in Hollywood Road. I loved being in that neighborhood. And, um, and I, um, I, I didn't want to move Parasite out of that neighborhood. Um, that was not, that was why Hollywood Center sounded like a good idea um, because we would have stayed, we would have stayed in that neighborhood. Um, um, but it was, um, yeah, I mean, I think, I think the, the move to North Point was great because it's a great new space or something, but it's nothing I, I was thinking about in, in, in that time. A stable was another attempt to bring Parasite outside of Poyan Street. And stable was, um, stable, the balance of power, was an attempt to almost piggyback on, on the Photon Studios. Because um, in Photon Studios, you had whatever, you had, say, 10,000 people going through that in, in four days. It was two weekends in four days. And um, maybe not 10,000, maybe 5,000. But anyway, but I mean, the, 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 the parasite, the normal parasite visitor amount is whatever, 100 a month, right? <laughs> if you, plus 100 if you have an opening um, in Poyang Street. So, so for me, these were, these were all ways to to try to move Parasite, um, to, to see Parasite not as a, uh, to see Parasite as a platform, platform that can work everywhere. And Stable, um, stable, stable was also fascinating because we had, I mean, we had, um, and it was, sure, it was together with, um, um, with, um, um, with some of the Futan artists that helped greatly um, it was, um, Cha Chun Fei was very helpful. I think Cha Chun Fei organized the studio um, we had. It was a big, giant studio. Um, and then we put us, uh, uh, we basically put a bamboo scaffolding in it and had these big posters printed out and made the artwork on these big banners, right? It was also um, the, the idea of how can we, um, are there different ways of, of doing artworks? I mean, it was the same what we did with the 1st of July. Um, March, um, where we printed works on banners, right? Or, and, um, and it was, um, yeah, so it was kind of, it was just natural to go there because it felt, it felt like there's everybody that's art interested is going to Fotan, so let's do a show there. And, Adi, right, and Adrian Wong, it was Adrian Wong's, I think it was even Adrian Wong's studio, but he was also, he was involved in it, that I remember. I don't know if it was a studio or not. But it was, it was just part of being in the Hong Kong art scene and being together with all these artists. In that time, for me, Parasite, pa Parasite was basically a professional education 
institutions for artists, right? That was it was a, it was an an educational facility for artists and professional art professionals. Let's call it that way, and and therefore the the, the artists. A lot of the artists were all, also the, the visitors, right? I mean, um, starting from the, the board, um, right, from um, Gina, Warren, Sarah, and so on, and then to all the artists we showed, um, all the people that were in Chinese University. And, and then you had um, 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 uh, but then also, I mean, our, I mean, Shu Hing Hua, who is now one of my favorite ink artists, he was our ADC um, assessor, which, and I didn't had no idea who that old man is that came there every exhibition and checked us out, right? I, I only saw him as that, you know, I never, I didn't realize um, till the end, actually till I came back, that this guy is one of the most important artists in Hong Kong. Um, it was just, you know, because I was so in the young scene that I didn't realize um, the older scene, and, and with, I mean, especially with Chewing Wa, I still, and he still, he even gave us a work for the, for the auction. You could have bought a Chewing Wa for 2000 Hong Kong at these auctions. Um, but, um, um, so th they came, I mean, certainly, um, Chan Yu Kung came, but also, I mean, um, the nice story always is that, um, that when we, when we, um, when we published, um, editions the first time, um, the first print we did was a Chow Fei print. Um, the, the edition, and um, and then this guy came in and and um, started, and he said, "I want to buy three. And I'm like, um, "Who are you?" And 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 that was William Lim that only started actually collecting, collecting, and then becoming member of the board, and now having an, an, an amazing collection. Um, but that was only because he he, he bought two Chow Fei prints, right? Um, and and we started talking, and that was there was also these these print and these edition and these editions. Um, they were there to make money, but they were also there to to communicate, to bring people in, to 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 bring people closer to to what's happening, right? Um, certainly, um, certainly, John Batten was there all the time. Map Office was there, and it was I think it was also a, a really nice place um, for people. I mean. I was always happy that we had a, a, a very strong, um, strong Hong Kong crowd there, but it, uh, we also had the expat crowd, right? And we brought that together. We, we brought a lot of these people um, together and a lot of people just met at these openings because, I mean, the space is so small that everybody was hanging out outside and it was every time, it was the same game. People, there was an opening, but we had too many people, people hang out outside, police would come. And it was every time, and they were, you know, and we, we know how to play it, and it was fine, right? It was also because in that time, um, Bo Yang Gai was much quieter than it is nowadays. Um, but I think most people came, most people, also most people came through Parasite, but again, this was all pre-art fair time, and with being pre-art fair time, you did not, no, you, you did not have the steady, income of international curators. However, you had, if they would come, they would come to you. And that's why we actually had in that time, in that time we had, I think it was even an open call, but we had portfolios of about 30, 40 artists in Parasite, in Parasite um, to, show, to show international curators. We were, the, we were, in that time, we were, we and certainly Asia Art Archive, we were the hub to, to promote all these young all these young artists because they didn't have galleries, right? I mean, who would? Um, and so if 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 these international curators would come in and um, some of them were quite big, um, they would come to us and we would give them the we would do the job nowadays the galleries are doing. Uh, I, I think there's I mean there isn't a lot of times when people talk about parasites, there's a certain um, melancholy about how nice it was and how avant-garde it was and how, how important it was. But it was also because we were basically the only one in downtown or downtown or in central um, that did any, you know, where you had an opening where people could go. I mean, a, a Hannah's opening in that time um, was 10 people and some cold spring rolls by Johnson, right? I mean, the, the idea of making an opening into an event Right of bringing people together um, 
wasn't that wasn't that that common in that time. So that really was these places. Uh, that place really became that place where you met also other artists, right? You met you met other artists, other art professionals. You met collectors and so on. And and um, and certainly ten years later, everything everything um, everything seems nicer and more amazing than it maybe was, right? I mean, um, I think we we normally. I mean, we had like. 60, 100 people for an opening, which was good, right? Um, but um, that's what you, um, um, but it really became, um, it became a platform, it became a meeting point, and it became a place to hang out. And that was also nice when, when Lee Kitt and I wasn't there anymore. I mean, I invited Lee Kitt to do the show, but I already had left to Korea, and then, um, and then Christina curated that show. And, um, I think that was also, um, um, and it is, yeah, it was that. And it was, I mean, it was also that, I mean, Jörn Young worked with me for maybe half a year, but he did that great 14K show, which was also a crazy show in the end. Um, then, um, um, but then Christina, who now is, is probably one of the, ni one, definitely one of the best Hong Kong curators, um, worked with me and then um, um, Jung Ma then started working with me already when I left but then he did the, um, he did the Lee Kit, um, no sorry the Pak Shan Shuen um, installation in Venice so that's what I also did right we, we did the Venice Pavilion twice <laughs> um, Paris, Parasite did it very early on and then I was already in Korea but we still it was still a Parasite project um, so um, so both Jung Ma uh, yeah, Christina was working for a television company before she joined Parasite, and Jung Ma was working for a gallery called Art Statement. Um, so it was also about, um, yeah, giving people opportunities, and not only artists, but also um, also curators, and and um, yeah, and I think that's um, so. Um, what did the art scene think? I don't. I don't. I don't know, but if you look who is now, who is nowadays um, successful, um, both curator or um, curator or in the galleries and so on, um, uh, who are the artists that really had an influence um, on Hong Kong? They all went through that time. Right? They all either were friends or or we we showed them or we promoted them or um, so. So it must have had some kind of influence. I think bringing in some international artists had a certain impact in, into Hong Kong and into the Hong Kong audience and in also having the chance to see, um, I mean, yeah, having the chance to see um, some very good artists here in Hong Kong. And it's not only to see them, but also, I mean, when Lawrence Wiener came here, um, he made that artist talk, and I think we had, I don't know, 150 people, right? And um, that changes that changes a way of people thinking about art, right? Um, so it's not only, and they were all um, they were all very um, they were all very approachable when they were here. And Lawrence, by by pure chance, um, Lawrence Wiener was here for three or four weeks because you know. And and Paul was here for also three or four weeks, and 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 Chao Fei was here for two three weeks, um, but also Hege came here for a week. Hege Yang, sorry, Hege Yang came here for for a, a longer time, and um, then Oppenheim came, and so um, so these people, it, it was not only showing them, but having them present, right? Having them, and but also then, but also it meant that, for example, Pak Chun Chun could go out then and said, look, I exhibited with Francis Aldis, even if it was only a video. But, uh, but he was then read, these artists were read in another context because they showed um, with these other artists. And then, and, and certainly, um, or when, when Christina then went to, to Amsterdam to do the Apple, um, she knew Ulai, right? And she, she got connected to Ulai, which we had shown together. And that became a very important connection. So it was, Again, it was not only, I mean, showing the, the works was very important, but 
it was mu it was as important as doing these networks and bringing bringing people together and bringing new ideas and 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 bringing also in that time no hong kong artist could imagine that they could actually live from their art it was that was not there right the idea that you can be a professional artist um was quite abstract in that time because there were no every artist that um in hong kong not every but most artists were teachers that was the only way to to survive and and um and and i think that we, we showed that there is something like an international an international art scene and then um and i think that 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 changed um probably people's minds quite a bit every exhibition is, is special and memorable and even now i had to go back and look at all the ones um we did but i think um i, I mean parasite always had quite a political agenda and i think that that spirit is still very much alive um also because cosmin um is 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 keeping that perfect was always um in that time we called institutions like that um alternative art space and i think that is this idea of being alternative to a, um was always very important for parasite because parasite was founded because the people the people that founded parasite didn't have spaces to show right and they didn't have spaces to see the art, the art they wanted to see and um and therefore um and 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 that idea of being independent being alternative um actually becomes um very very important again at this moment in hong kong and that's why we need an institution like parasite but like Par parasite as that paradise and that's quite nice that's why parasite becomes that paradise right no that 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 place that platform where you can be a bit more um, where you can be very outspoken and where you can experience and where you can also um what was important for the for for these artists showing there um we never told them what to show we never had a show ready to go right it was always for every artist they did something new there that they, they did something they never done before and they could never had i mean like i remember paul chan um paul's show and um but also um paul so it was so small that for these for the bigger for the for the hong kong artists it was a big space to do something bigger than they normally could do and for the international artists it was a small show show so they didn't have they could experience it was like a drawing it was like a sketchbook it was really something where they could do things they couldn't do in other places um because we were um it was so non-commercial and there was there was no art market in that time right it that it didn't um it didn't exist in i mean basically it didn't exist again we were we were um, it was a much smaller organization um with much less rent <laughs> as, as i said i get i think it was 17 or 22000 dollars um I think when we when it moved out of Boyan Guy it was 220,000 dollars so it tenfolded um the um I mean we, there were the fundraising was different there was um there was an auction the auction was always there and to my knowledge Parasite was the first one who did these fundraising auctions um the auctions were much smaller and um, we had an auction we had one in a bar we had one of course where were these auctions i know we had one in a bar and one gosh i don't even remember anymore um they were always the works we got for the auctions were not that good um half of the auction was always bought by one person <laughs> by joe fong um who then bought it to give it to her, all his friends which was quite quite nice um 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 adc funding was important i mean it was basically adc funding um and then um when we did international shows we would ask um like the institute as uh, the the goethe or the the french french or the dutch um um we would ask them for money and we would usually get it because Paris, i mean it was a non independent space in asia you get you always could get you know a few a few thousand us dollars or more um out of these institutions and um 
but there were no big donors or sponsors, right? They, they didn't exist at that time. Um, I think that it changed, um, it changed with, um, it changed with, um, Jana coming in, um, and for the better. I mean, again, it's great that Parasite grew and became another, another organization. But in, in our times, I think 50%, 50 percent of the funding was probably ADC. I think it was like 300,000, 300, 400,000 Hong Kong dollars and the rest. Then we had like three, 400,000 um, from the auction and probably 100, 200 from somewhere else. It was a very small operation. I mean, we had, we had three staff. I mean, it was, I think it was, um, me, Christina and, um, one, one more person. Um, I think, I, I mean, yeah, also, I mean, salaries were not, I mean, were, were not great. I mean, you didn't, you know, you couldn't, you didn't become rich working at Parasite. Very proud, um, of being part of that history. And I think one has to thank really, um, the funding members and the board of having that vision and the board members, um, of, of supporting it, putting all that, um, time and resources into it. And, um, and, um, and, but also it is still an artist, almost an artist financed space because all the auction, you know, the, the, the auction, let's talk, you know, um, the auction, um, is supported by artists and gallerists now. And, and that's, um, that's something very beautiful, right? It is an, an, an a space, not it's, yes, there is government support. And there's other people's support, but it is also highly and hugely, um, supported by its own, by the art, by the artist. And, and, um, and, um, and that's, that's pretty extraordinary. And you don't have that many spaces like that in, in the world. The time in Parasite was essential for my thinking of how we set up, um, M plus when I came back. Right. I mean, I was three years out, but, um, I was then, I mean, Lars Nitwe hired me for M plus because, um, I had the local experience, right? I had, I had that, um, I, I have that mix out of, um, I have an inter international perspective, but I knew, I knew Hong Kong, you know, I, I knew it very well. I, and I knew the politics and I knew the, I knew the artists, the politics, the, um, you know, um, so I had a very clear vision of what I wanted, um, to do. And I think if you read, um, if you read the, a lot of, um, a lot of thinking we had in the early years in, par in, in M plus, um, um, that was completely founded on, on what I, I learned in the three years. So that, and, um, and the first and, um, the or the one board member I was really happy to get um for for Parasite was also um Wong Lang Shi Wo um because I knew he is somebody that has a good has a vision and understands um both the local and the international. Um and um and certainly my um my my time here and in China and in Asia were well, I mean I wouldn't be I would I would not be in, in Daegun or in M plus without my time in, in Parasite, obviously. And, um, and I, um, so for me, it was, um, a complete game changer, but every job is, I mean, you know, I mean, it's, uh, um, it's, um, every job you do is just, you know, you know, you do not one job without the other one. Right. I also would not have gotten, um, the career, the, the job in the, um, uh, as chief curator of the Nanjun Park Art Center, I had because they were looking for a German curator that had experience in Asia. Um, so even that job, which doesn't look very related to Parasite, I would not have, um, I would not have, um, been offered without my time at Parasite.